Shalom, shalom, Yashar Allah. I want to start off first things first, giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rakadash, which in the Paleo Hebrew tongues, great names of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, and shalom to your sister and brothers living in this truth. And shalom to the brothers and sisters that's listening and studying, show themselves approved. Shalom. Gonna talk about today something that's very upcoming, incoming, and it's gaining traction. It's becoming more, more clear every day we move forward in prophecy. And that's that what? The MOTB. Esau keep, it's kind of like a promotion. He keep promoting it, promoting it, promoting. That's why I'm looking at these other camps and these people in the world. Like, how can you not see this? The devil's telling you what he's about to do. He's promoting it. So we're gonna read an article. That's kind of prepping people for the MOTB and getting them ready for, you know, their, their big trial that's about to come up. So this is, it says, cash is no longer king. Woo, you hear that? Hit that again. Cash is no longer king. So this devil's doing away with cash. What you need to say, if he's getting rid of cash, how are you going to, you know, buy and sell? What's the next move? <laughs> And through the power and spirit of your Habashah Shia, we know what that next move is. You know, it's going to lead to that device. So let's read this article. The number of automated teller machines, or ATMs, across the U.S. declining as many people allow digital payments rather than cash. Key word in there. Digital. Digital means it's on the internet. You can't touch it. It's not tangible. It's on the, what they call it, cyberspace. It's in Esau's AI, his algorithms. You can't go to the ATM and pull out something that's digital. It's on your phone. It's on the device. So it says the number of ATMs in the U.S. are declining each year, going from a peak of 470,000 in 2019 to 451,500 by the end of 2022, according to data from the research from Euro Monitor Inter Inter International. A Federal Reserve study reported a 12.4% jump in digital transactions between consumers from the first quarter of 2020 to the second. Woo, did you hear that? Now, what was going on during 2020 during that time? It's like a wild guess. <laughs> you know, and that, that was the whole purpose of that, to speed it up. So think about what event was going on in 2020, and that's why Esau did it. So consumers making those digital transactions for the first time jumped 18% over the same time. Cash and checks are expected to fall to 14% of total payments this year from 42% in 2010, with the most significant drop coming just after the pandemic started in 2020, <laughs> according to Euro Monitor estimates. So they're going to answer. Here we go. During the pandemic, online shopping increases. Many people were stuck indoors and fears of the 1-9 the being contracted through handling money made cash sales decrease. See, I, the article is telling you why. <laughs> so we're going to keep reading. Between the fear of cash and the increase in online shopping, you know, places like Amazon really boomed during that period, digital payment methods began increasing significantly, and the demand for digital payments has not seemed to slow down as more people rely on digital payments rather than cash. Woo, they made a big move during that time. Did they not? Did they not, y'all, Sharala? The decrease of consumers needing cash has resulted in fewer ATMs being scattered across the country due to little use of teller machines. ATMs hit a peak in 2019 with the U.S. having 147,000. But each year since the pandemic, the number of machines has dropped down to the number being at 451,500 451, into 2022. Most people have begun to rely on digital payments, but there are still consumers who rely almost entirely on cash. And the decline of ATMs has been a problem as they have to travel far to find a machine when before the machines were nearly every corner they're still very prevalent here in Tulsa Oklahoma so I'm happy for that I don't have to go too far for ATM but I know they're going to soon start taking them out though I'm going to have to like get my money about the bank and that's the way they're going to wean everybody off of cash although the demand of cash ATMs is slow significantly banking experts say the ATMs are kept aspect of banking industry and the machines are not expected to go extinct anytime soon 
Yeah, right. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. This devil got to speed the stuff up. That's why I was just saying to myself, I might just start going to my bank and just get my money out like that. I can see them. That's how they're going to force you. Just they're going to do the same thing with electrical vehicles and gasoline. They'll just drive, drop, drive up the price of gas, make it real expensive, and then tell you, man, you better go buy a Tesla and, and start putting up electric, you know, them little ports to charge the batteries everywhere. They're, they're forcing this thing. Just like Revelation 360 said, he calls of all. So he's going to force you into a new system. If you want to still drive gasoline cars, guess what? I don't make gas $20 a gallon. You still want to pull out cash at the ATMs, guess what? It's only like three in your whole state. <laughs> you know, that's how this devil going to do. So go go to. And the whole point of him doing that is because he has to get everybody prepped for the MOTB system. That way he can defile the children of Israel, make them no good to Yahweh Shah, and, you know, be able to monitor their every move and transaction to where nothing is not seen by his AI systems. If all the money goes digital, that's why they want a central bank digital currency, then he can see your every transaction. He know where you spent it at, what time you spent it at, and who you spent it at. He can track your every move. He can GPS you. That way your whole life is monitored by him, by the B system, Esau. So let's go watch a video. It's going to further, you know, hammer home the point, man. Let's go to Alabama. Man, he, he got a real good collage put together, man. Y'all was doing these Karagma episodes, man. I really love them, you know. And it makes it real easy to, to show, you know, what's really going on. Because this thing is not up for debate for me no more. If you can't see it, I'm like, you a fool. And I already know your fate. So th this thing is here and what we need to do for the hopeful elect, you know, the sheep is we need to mentally and spiritually get prepared for this, you know, start going through our head what we're going to do when this happens. That way, when Esau really brings it out, we're not like, you know, we don't have anxiety overcome us. We're already mentally prepared for this. We're spiritually prepared for this and we're going to, you know, be able to coast on through it. So let's play this video where, I, man, he show. I Man, Elder Show straight up, like they're they're really stringing this thing together. And he's gonna show clips of a dude that they had put to death because he told the secrets. He got buddy buddy, one of the grandchildren of the Rockefellers, Aaron Russo, and he told the plan. And man, they put that dude to death. They ain't gonna say that he never existed. I'm like, Esau, man, come on, man. You, you gotta get what? they can't even lie good no more. So let's let's watch the clip. For an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. The whole, the whole agenda is to create a one-world government where everybody has an, R, R, an RFID machine implanted in them. All money is to be uh, in those special. Right, there'll be no more cash. If your government decided to freeze your bank accounts today, do you think they might have some power over you tomorrow? What if I told you there were people planning to take complete control of your money and therefore control of your life, your choices, and your future? Some might call you a conspiracy theorist for even wow. thinking it, except it is happening in plain sight. Mm. It's just being positioned as something that's good for you. And what if I told you the dominant countries of the world are leading you to believe they are in conflict when they are actually working together for the sake of a one world monetary system? Woo, hey, that's spiritual. <laughs> I played that clip. My last lesson, I just said that. But I talked about the whole political theater, World War III. I said that these countries are in cahoots together. They're bringing this system online, man. They ain't really banging like that. And like all the warships and tanks and, and missiles they gathering up, all their military, that's to attack the children of Israel. They want to come after us, man. They not really going to bang with each other too much. You know, in the head, they might, you know, they might get to fighting a little bit, little skirmishes, but really they're coming after the children of Israel. So back to the video. This refers to your money now. It's not my saying. It's officially published text within the World Economic Forum. 
highly inclusive club of billionaires, global policymakers, and heads of central banks, all of which who met in Davos this year to further this reset agenda. Their plan is to have uh, governments for the world, uh, they want to do it through the UN, right, and have everybody on this earth implanted with an RFID. Do you believe that? I know that. goes away well if cash goes away you are uh, creating a financial system that can be controlled centrally and in this environment it will be controlled centrally by a secret governance system that wants to harvest people it wants to convert people from humans with human rights to resources like a barrel of oil that can be harvested yeah so it's a very uh, you know, it's basically a system that turns humans into livestock and manages them as, as if you would be managing livestock. And it's very, um, you know, I call it a slavery system because yeah. it's very invasive. Now we're talking about digital technology that they can put in our bodies and use to read our minds yeah. and do all sorts of very creepy things. Yeah. It's a very anti-life vision. Yeah. Well, it's really, it's really going on in Europe at the moment. Right. Uh, how is it doing? What is the value proposition of a digital currency? And if it's got one, then that's great. I mean, for sure, there's an underlying technology there, which offers a lot. The technology is being used in lots of great applications now. Just to name one, you know, if you used to, used to go over to Istanbul and you could, you could buy like a $5,000 handbag for like $200 because it fell off the truck or something like that. But now those $5,000 handbags are being registered on a, on a blockchain so that they can't fall off the truck, okay? They can't be illegitimate ones. They're either on the blockchain or they're not on the blockchain. Well, this is, this is true genius, right? This is, this is, uh, this is amazing. So, so uh, all kinds of tokens can be created that have true value behind them. Bitcoin just doesn't happen to be one of them, okay? has no value proposition unless you're in the underworld where that's a it's a currency which is in use and if you want to do that fine we'll find a way to blow it up someday and then and then you'll be you'll be in a problem but anyway uh we will though have hmm. digital currencies issued by central banks if people want them i mean have you got any cash on you nope. no cash at all they're really done. So you're a candidate. You're going to want, you're going to mm. want to have something, your phone or, or a, some sort of a smart card, or like in Sweden, a little fish embedded in your wrist that allows you to mm. to tap and go. A little fish embedded in your wrist that allows you to to tap and go. Ooh, you hear that? Exactly. Several central banks yeah. have, like the Bank of England, already prepared their microfish implant RFID fish to be implanted under your skin. Yeah, appreciate it. It's a penalty if you take that. Apostle Elders may talk about this warning. You know, so they touch ground. And we push it out as well because we see that is the MOTB. It's going to be that. It's not seeing. It's not all the little stupid stuff that you hear. And those other camps that say that, man, I, in my perspective, they're of a 1C3. They're sellouts. And they're preparing you. They're paid by Esau to prep you to take it. And people that follow those other camps, they're going to take it. You know why? Because they haven't been prepped not to take it. And they're going to panic. And it's really going to hit them. You know, they're going to lose all their faith. You know why they're going to lose all their faith? Because they're going to doubt what they've been taught. And then when they doubt what they've been taught on that, that's why I understand the Apostle Elder said you can't get that prophecy wrong because it creates doubt. And that little hole of doubt, if you doubt that, you're going to doubt... The whole doctrine you've been taught versus that's why Yahabashah said put on the whole armor of Yahabashah. Yahabashah. That whole armor goes into having the whole truth. Once you have the whole truth and everything you've been taught comes in the prophecy, guess what it's going to do? Strengthen you because you've been told this is going to happen. When it happens, it's going to solidify your faith. It's going to keep you, which is going to go to our first precept when I say that. See, that's the spirit. 
It's going to keep you from taking that. And it's going to have your strength built up because you have the whole truth. You're not going to doubt nothing. Like I've been told this is it. When it comes, you're going to be like, okay, I knew it was coming. So I'm got to do this instead. I'm about to put my faith in. How about you? I was shy. I'm not about to take it. That's why the elders and apostles get on these other camps that don't teach the MOTB right. Because really, they're sending people to their grave. And I think a lot of these other camps know that. But Esau paying on the bag to do that. Because there's dudes who knew it was that. And then all of a sudden, they camp get big and then they teach something different. I'm like, what, what was the change at? What happened? And then I'm like, I know what happened. That bag of money came into play. Because Esau likes to make people go off. And the number one bait that he uses is money. He'll go to them dudes that leaders of other camps. I give you fifty million dollars to teach your congregation this. And if a Jake don't care about the sheep, you know a hireling, and he don't care about your Habashel shot, he's going to take that bag of cash, and he's going to do that. Send all he's going to destroy all those people that's following him, and then the people that's following him, you can't feel sorry for them because the spirit of the Lord wasn't in them to see it. Because I followed the teacher of the French group. And when I heard they leader, the head dude, you know, I was watching at first. They weren't really talking about that at first. You know, I was really getting my legs under me, getting a doctrine, you know, getting a, a couple paleo Hebrew terms under my belt. But then when I heard a dude talking about what the MOTB is, I disagreed with his statement because I didn't believe in that. First, he said, you know, I'm talking about uh, WFI. I was watching them first, not quite enough. He said at first it was a spiritual mark. And I disagreed with that. I'm like, heck, no. Nah. Esau don't do nothing on the spiritual aspect like that. I'm like, how is something spiritual going to stop me from buying or selling? That was just stupid to me. And see, like the most high I've been dealing with me before I even got in the truth. And I remember getting with an a old partner of mine. Um, I got with the Ak Kadar Sahan. And we had seen, you know, videos on YouTube of them putting the devices in people. And I remember before I even found the camps, I was like, I, and this is if I even knew Esau was the devil. I said, the white man going to use it to control people. That's immediately what I said. when I, And I think I seen this back in like 2011, 2012. And, you know, I found the truth in about 2015, 2016. You know, I was watching Watch for Israel in like 2016. And he, he made that statement. I, that's when I had to find another group. So I'm like, dude, that's no, no, that's that's off, man. That That's not it. And then when I, I found Great Millstone in 2018, you know, uh, the page we just left, Mission of the Kingdom of Heaven, because I remember asking Yabashah for that, because I'm like, man, somebody got out of truth, because this dude, he give you some stuff, but some stuff's messed up, and then I learned that Naquan and them are really just offshoots of Great Millstone. He broke off, and he teaches his own thing, and I think he got that bag of money is what it was. That That's what really ever happened. That's why he teach a different doctrine, because it's very similar to Great Millstone, but he got differences, and the differences is, you know, he got, he get paid to teach that. So, Back to the topic what I'm trying to talk about, that, that discernment. Everybody that's following these false groups need to have discernment. The Spirit of the Lord is not in them because if it was, they did the move that I did. You leave those other camps. You got brothers now that's leaving over the MOTB. You know, I should have, uh, I might do a lesson on the brother that left watching for Israel because the MOTB is here. You can see it. Like, this makes all the sense in the world that it's that device because with that device, you can... Stop somebody from buying or selling. Plus, when you look at the root word of Mark, it goes in haragma, you know, which that means like a, a etching under the skin. And when you look at, you know, the, the, the device, it goes in your skin. And they got two versions of it, which I'm like, I know this is prophecy right here. They got one that goes in your hand, as we just heard that devil say in that clip. And they got one, Elon Musk, Neuralink, and his other companies got the two that goes in your head. The same thing that John the Revelator prophesied in the book, he's seen that it's happening. And it's been distributed by who the Bible calls the so-called devil. Esau Edom. So I'm like, you can't make this up. This is prophecy. It's on point. And so now, being in the truth, we got to get ready for this trial. That's going to be a test. And it's, I'm not going to say like this thing is going to be easy because it's not. Because you, you're not going to be able to work if you don't have this device. You're not going to be able to, you're going to lose your house, your home. Um, we probably going to lose our, 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 you know, your marriages, whoever you with. If they not tucked in the truth, you, you're going to lose your children. You know, they're going to be like, I'm hungry. I, I need to eat. Go get that so I can eat. Don't you want to be a good mother? Don't you want to be a good father? 
You know, it's going to be a, a real heavy thing to watch your children be hungry and the devil's waving that device in your face. Like, that's not going to be an easy thing. And I ain't going to sit up and talk like it is because it's not. But what we got to do, though, is we got to overcome that. We have to. And how do we do that, man? We got to do it through the, the, the being locked in, have our spirit and our faith turned up and you have a shot to the max. And the best thing to do that is like repetition, man. That's why we always put out these lessons and telling you what's coming. Prepare your mind. Do some fasting. Get ready to go a couple of days without eating. Like you got to build your strength up, man. That's why this word goes into edification. You got to be built up because this is going to be a very, very big test that we got to pass, man. And the scripture call it the outward temptation. We're about to read that now. Um, this is Revelation 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon um, all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So everybody's about to get this test, man. And, you know, a lot of two-thirds is going to take it real easy. They don't give a damn. They they stupid. They sodish. They don't care about Yahweh Shah. They're they going to take it. Now, for us, that's the, the small minority, the remnant that's not going to take it. It's going to be a, a hour of temptation. But what did the scripture just say? And this is like boost your faith. That's why this thing, like, it's not really bothering me like that. I don't have a lot of anxiety because the scripture just said, if you kept the word of my patience, what's the word of the patience, man? These scriptures. If you hold fast to these words in this book, you're going to be kept from the hour of temptation, which means you have a shot going to make a way for you to eat. He's going to make a way for you to be sheltered. He's going to make a way for you to be taken care of outside of Esau's system. So what we got to do is mention prayer our minds to, at some point, we're going to be disengaged from this current system we're living in. We're not going to be going to work. We're not going to be paying taxes. We're going to be living like straight off the land, man. We're going to be like pilgrims upon the earth, walking around, going here and there, and just getting, you know, our meals wherever we can. Like they say, they say in the world, you don't know where your next meal coming from. Like, we're going to be in that state. But we got to trust and believe that Yahweh Shah is going to, you know, provide for us, man. These doomsday preppers are prepping food for us. If you, you know, got your faith turned to Yahweh Shah, Shah, man, he going to take care of us, man. These doomsday preppers are already prepping things for us. We just got to be locked in the spirit and let the Lord lead us. That way we be all right, man. Kind of like that movie, The Book of Eli. You know, Denzel was a blind dude walking by faith, man. He was taken care of. You know, he had what he needed. He had a backpack. He's like a pilgrim upon the earth. That's why that's a very good movie. That book of Eli with Denzel Washington. Very good movie, y'all. Sure, I recommend, you know, everybody in truth watch that. It ain't perfect. Nothing that Esau do is perfect, but it's a good representation of how we're going to have to live once the MOTB system has been, you know, erected. Because they're going to be like, hey, if you want to, you know, come and work at this job. And I can see that's why they want these Tesla's electric cars, because they're going to make the device attached to the car. Like, you can't drive if you ain't, you know, got that. Pretty much, you can't even drive, period, because to get gas, how you going to buy gas if you don't have a device? So we're going to be walking. You know, that's why, I, I like, I'm thinking about myself, y'all, so I need to go purchase me a bike. <laughs> For real. <laughs> I need to go get me a lapel bike, because we ain't going to be able to buy no, no gasoline, because I'm not about to go get the device. You know, that's the test. That's the big mark. I'm trying to be first fruits in the kingdom of heaven. So I'm not taking that because the penalty of taking the device is that now you're going to get the wrath of Yahabashi Awasha. I don't want no smoke with Yahabashi Awasha. So I'm already prepared in my mind to just what the world call be a bum. If that's what I got to be, that's what I got to be. But I'm not about to do what Esau say do. And see, you know, this is going to be real hard for a rich man to do this, to go from a rich lifestyle to a poor lifestyle. So I like how Yahweh got me. Like, I ain't all super rich, none of that. I just got enough to take care of me. So I, I'm going to just look for the Yahweh to do that when, you know, I got I can't go to work no more or, you know, live in this system anymore. Like, I'm already detaching myself from the system. I'm already detaching myself from this system. And, and that's heavy, man, especially when you're in a relationship with somebody because they'll be looking at you like, you know, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Like, it's crazy. It's going to create a lot of friction. It's going to create a lot of friction because we live in a whole totally different world than, you know, worldly people do. See, and I know, especially like, say, if you're a man and you got a, a woman, like, I notice women want everything concrete. They want to see it. So when I, my answer is that I'm going to trust in the Lord and have my faith, you have a child make a way. That's not good enough for women. 
they need something visible. They want you to have a standard military. <laughs> they want you to have like all kind of guns and, and all kind of money and gold and silver put up. Like they need to see something visible on how you're going to beat this system. And, you know, as a man in the truth, you know, we don't have that, man. We got strictly faith, man. Yabasha will make a way. <laughs> and that's going to create friction, like I said, because women like, nah, I don't know. I can roll with that, man. You, you, you about to be, you about to be a bum. I can't, you know, oh, especially y'all women, man. You a broke dude. You ain't got that most no money, man. You ain't, you ain't nothing. So prepare to lose your relationship, <laughs> Akim. Prepare for that to happen. Because, <laughs> hey, we about to be reduced, man. And I'm already, hey, getting, getting, I'm already taking that, internalizing that. Um, man, we're gonna be like Job. You know, read the book of Job. Job lost everything. That, that's gonna most likely happen to us in this truth when this MOTB system comes to a head. Because we're, we're that's gonna be that fire. Which we'll go to my next precept. We're gonna be tried, man. Yeah, I'm sure I don't want no lip service, man. Everybody be like, oh, I believe in the Lord. I'm out there in highway hedges. I do lessons every day. I believe in the Lord. I got faith. You know, you have a shot like, okay, I hear you talking. I hear you talking. <laughs> now, I'm going to let this devil put in a whole B system, M-O-T-B, and I want to see if you're going to let this devil put that device in your body. I want to see. And I'm going to let this devil take everything away from you. You ain't going to be able to work. <laughs> you ain't going to be able to buy or sell, say you had that device the devil's putting in your face. And I want to see, are you going to rap for me then? Or are you going to go ahead and bow down and get that device? You know, I know I like how Yabasha does things. He wanna see. I don't wanna hear it. I wanna see it, man. Show me. He got that, that show me mentality. How you gonna do with this read that precept? He's about to allow this beast to get enacted to, to try the whole world. And so this is Sirach or Ecclesiastes 2 and 5. For gold is tried in the fire, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. So I like this precept to let you know what that, that fire that that fire is. The fire is the, the adversity. The adversity of you know, you're about to lose your house. Diversity of you about to lose your car. Diversity of you about to lose your family. You know, three things that's like that you need to make in the society. And like losing your family is a big one for Jake. You know, Jake is very family oriented. You know, we love our children and that's going to be a big thing. So that's fire. You know, that's going to burn you. It's going to burn like, oh, man. And like, like, say, if you still with your, your, your family, you still have your children but yet you can't, you don't have a device and you ain't got no food and your children over there starving. That's fire, man. That is fire. That's going to burn. <laughs> like, that'll make Jake cry. You know, we love our children. See, our children suffer. That's going to be huge. So, hey, Yabashai is not lying when he say he's going to put us in the furnace to try us like gold. That's going to be true. So, with that being said, what we need to do now is, you know, start preparing for that mentally. And that might be easier for us men than you women. Because, you know, we're just mentally and physically stronger. Like, I know this for women, that's going to be really, really hard. Then I want to say, all the women who have a man of the Lord, you ought to feel blessed. You ought to feel really, really blessed. Because that's going to make it easier for you. Because you have a head that's going to, you know, you can lean on him like a rock. You know, so I feel like women who have a, a righteous head, a man of the Lord, that's a blessing because it's going to make it easier for you. And I say for the women that don't, man, y'all got to really dig in deep. Because, you know, women are very emotional and this is going to hurt. I ain't going to lie to you, man. That's why we got to feel that, that pain now. That way, so when it comes and it happens, you know, we, we have some calluses. We, we kind of built up to it. We're strong, you know, and we're able to withstand that. And the Lord is not going to put too much on us that we can, you know, that we just going to just burn all the way up. But he going to test us. So we're going to be tried, man. You can't burn up. You got to be that gold. You know, you got to hang tough. And we got to start mentally preparing for that now. Because this devil about to do it. He's about to do it. It's, it's been prepped. It's, the, the laws is already written up. They just looking for the best angle. You heard that the one devil said in the clip. He's looking to make people accept it. So they're going to run a bunch of campaigns. A bunch of uh, good things about it. They're going to make it like the dude said. They're going to make it seem like, you know, you need it. The woman said that too. They're going to make it seem like you need it. And it's something good for society. And they're doing it because it's gaining traction. People are liking it. 
Um, they're looking at it as convenient. It makes their life easier. And they're going to take it. And all they need is the majority. They don't need everybody to be on, on page with it. They just need the majority to be on page with it. And they'll just try to flesh out the remnant. You know, point the finger. Oh, they don't want it. He old-fashioned. Oh, man, they, they some terrorists, seditionists. They holding us back. You know, and they'll just use the majority of the group to ostracize the minority of the group. And the majority is going to go for this. But I prophesied in our word that they're going to do it. So I want to go back to... Let's go back to Revelation chapter 3. And I want to hit on 11. It says, Revelation 3 and 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast that has that no man take thy crown. So we got the truth. We got it. What we got to do now is hold tight to it. Man. We got to hold tight to all the words. That we've been taught through these scriptures, these breakdowns. And it should be easy, man, because prophecies happen the way it's being relayed to us. MOTB getting erected, you can see it. So we know we got the truth. So now that we got the truth now, now faith got to be activated. And then, so we can do this. Here go Revelation 3 and 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my Yahweh. And he should go no more out. And I write upon him the name of my Yahweh and the name of the city of my Yahweh which is new Jerusalem, which coming down out of heaven from my Yahweh, and I will write upon him my new name. You hear that? For he that overcome it, basically you get the kingdom of heaven. And then I would like what the scripture say, because this cuts like IUIC talking about, you know, we don't know the name and there's going to be a new name, you know, so just worry about that, man. The new name going to come when we get the kingdom of heaven. But right now we have the name. Yahweh Shah was called a name when he was here on earth. You know, so I advise you to put respect on that name. That's Yahweh Why Yahweh Shah. Because he said he'll write the name upon you. You know, that goes to Psalms 91. 91 and 14 to be exact, I want to say. And he said, I'll write upon him my new name. So that comes, the new name will come in the new kingdom. Because I know that they'll use, I can't remember where that said, but I, I see it use the scripture. They'll use this one and another one. To, you know, take the names from people and be like, we don't know the name. He's going to write a new name, so don't worry about the name. But I'm like, dude, he just said we got a name. The new name will come when we in the kingdom. So we need to focus on those names we're given now. And then, you know, Lord willing, we overcometh, because he said right there, he didn't overcome it, will I make a pillar in the temple of my Yahweh? And that's what I want to be. So I'm seeking to overcome. Only when I'm overcome, I'm going to have to overcome by my faith. And my belief in Yahweh was shy. Let me let me make sure I'm right on that. Psalms 91 and 14. See, and this is something that you can hit IUIC with. I don't know how they don't miss this part. This is Psalms 91 and 14. Because they set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he have known my name. I'm arguing with IUIC dude at my job, and he like, the name ain't important. We don't need to know the name. I'm like, dude, Psalms 91 says otherwise. And I kept hitting him with a bunch of precepts to prove that we do have the name, and he, he walked off, man. And when they went and got their big dude, I think he was a captain at IUIC. He came to debate me, and I cut him up too, man. He got confounded. I'm like, man, see, that's y'all listening to Nate. He got y'all all messed up, man. Y'all better, you know, get with it. Get over in Great Millstone quick, you know, all that, that man pleasing, because Nate ain't got the truth, man. He had it, he lost it. He he sold the truth for some money. And they following him, and they all coming to me and just, you know, getting cut up. Cause like over here, we we know the truth over here. Like we got it. So I'm hitting all and all he could do is come with that priest I read early in that other one. It's in Revelation. And they kept trying to say, oh, we ain't got the name. We don't know the name. And I'm like, nah, we do. We spoke Paleo Hebrew. The name is in Paleo Hebrew. It's Yahweh Wah, Yahweh Shah. I'm going to say the name. Now, you can go and do whatever you want to say and believe whatever Nate say, and that's on you. Plus, Nate don't even believe in MOTB. He says sin. He done changed his uh, MOTB doctrine like four or five times. I've been the truth, so I'm like, I don't know how they still following that dude. But I know how. It's because he got the money. It's the flash. And that's going to be, you know, to their judgment, because he's setting them up to take it. They're going to take it. 
A lot of those men I see in IUIC are very worldly, man. They about money. That's why they attracted to Nate, because they're all about money. And if you love money, you're going to take the MOTB. Because you're like, okay, be broke out here. Give me the device. And they're going to get it. They're going to straight up get it, man. Us that's like, love your hobby shot over money, we like, man, whatever. I was tired of working anyway, <laughs> you know? So, hey, I'm about to, you know, believe on the Lord. He going to make a way for me. And if I got to, you know, be out here walking around, bumming it out, so be it. So be it. And it ain't going to, ain't going to like we're going to be out here forever. Because you're house on the way. So I just got to rough it for a little bit till my, my Lord and Savior get here. If I got to do that, I got to do that. And that's my mindset where I'm at. That's that's my thinking. Because I'm not about to set up here and take the MOTB and then be destroyed. Ain't got, you know, no chance of, of making it. That's what I love about you have a shot. He gives us a chance to make it. An opportunity. If you take the MOTB, you ruin your opportunity. Like, then there is no being saved. There is no deliverance. You just ruined yourself. You didn't give yourself an opportunity. See, right now we have the opportunity to be delivered. We have the opportunity to be saved. I, I feel like you should always give yourself that option, man. Taking the MOTB, that's not an option. That's, man, you might as well go blow your little noodles out. <laughs> if you do that, I mean, it's the same thing. So, and I'm, I'm so happy that he gave me the eyesight to see that, which I'm about to read in this precept. This is Revelation 3 and 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. So we've been anointed with the eye salve, you know, us blessed souls that have discernment, to make it to Great Millstone, the house of David, to get the truth. And we can see what's coming, man. And Lord willing, we make it so we be, you know, that gold after we got tried in that fire. And that white raiment goes into being pure. He's going to clothe us, man. We're going to be clothed in the truth. We're going to be clothed in that salvation. You know, that deliverance. To where we ain't going to be shamed and we ain't going to feel naked, man. Because we clothed up, we arming up with this truth. So when MOTB come and all that coming, see, people that don't believe in, in MOTB being a device, when it comes online, they're going to feel shame. They're going to feel stupid. Like, dang, man, the brother's great millstone was right, and I was clowning them. Now what I'm going to do? And the shame going to come, and then all kind of negative feelings going to come. And most likely going to end up with the MOTB in them. Us, we ain't going to be shame-faced. We're not going to be shame. we like, man, Apostle Elder said it was that. And my spirit, I knew it was that. And lo and behold, it's that. So all I got to do, I ain't got no shame in my game. I got to do is stick to my guns and, you know, have my faith that the Lord going to take care of me and keep me from the hour of temptation. That's what all I got to do. I believe on the true doctrine. I'm armored up all the way. And that was that eye salve that he blesses with, man. The division. Bless for your eyes for they see. We seen this coming. This is, I, I seen it coming from a long time ago. The Lord been dealing with me for a long time. And I just, he always, I always knew the spirit how Esau get down. I, I didn't find out Esau was, was the devil until, you know, I found this Hebrew Israelite. You know, I found, I learned that in when I was uh, listening to Watch for Israel. But I always figured that. Because they always, that's this day, they, they nature, man. They, they are like snake, serpent like people. Because I always went to schools with, I went to two prestigious schools in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, Carver and Booger T. And we always get Edomites there. They they eventually took took them schools, Yashrala. They took those schools. And um, so I got to be around a bunch of rich Edomites and I just see how they are. And they were all like some devils to me, man. I I, I could never like be friends with Edomites, man. I just they whole nature just ugh. But all my friends be kicked with the Edomites. Oh, and daddy is loyal. His mama a doctor. I like I like Benny. And you know, and I like y'all yeah, go up to me the much, man. I'm over here, man. I can't I can't deal with them, man. They the devil, they wicked, they evil. I feel the vibration on them. And lo and behold, they parents, their 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 uh descendants is about to, you know, put the whole world on a on a system with a device in order to defile you. And they know what they doing. They know about Revelation chapter 14. They know you ain't going to be no good once they put the device in you. 
that's Esau's way of trying to stop the marriage of the, the remnant, the nation of Israel, and Yahweh Shai. This is his last chance. This is his last plan. This is his big diabolical plan to stop the coming of Yahweh Shai and stop Yahweh, you know, the children of Israel, Yahshua, from being in rulership. That's what this is all about. When you look at it, you know, the, the, the results of what he wants, when you look at it, what they call it in a nutshell, this is about stopping the children of Israel from getting rulership and stopping the coming of Yahweh Shai. He's trying to disrupt the wedding. That's what Esau is trying to do because he's in rulership right now. He don't want to let that go. He knows once Yahweh Shai meets with the remnant, Yahshua Allah, the hopeful elect, then that's the end of his rulership, man. He's going into slavery. And that's what it's all about. So for us, man, we're looking for the W. Let's get that win, Yahshua Allah. So with that, man, stay locked in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. Stay in this truth. Stay submerged in it. That way you can win. Because I noticed, man, we got some people, man, that's like straddling the fence and going back into the world. And they're going to get messed up for doing that. They're going to get in the MOTB system. That's going to happen. And I'm just seeing people now, like, you get to see it, man. They're starting to get scared. They're starting to be in that drawback spirit. And you get to see they about to go off in the world. If you go off in the world, you're going to get the MOTB. You're going to get it. <laughs> you got to stay in the house of David. You got to stay in the spirit man you gotta stay submerged in this truth that's what's gonna keep you you know keep you where you can you know be grounded and you can avoid the MOTB so with that I hope this has been edifying I wanna say Kwan Yashirala DTA by Bob Shalom